check the mic and make sure it sound right. Hi, I'm DK Will. This is DK Will Talk About It. We are now on the fifth in our series of XRP videos. And as much as I'm simplifying the storyline, it's uh, it is a complicated storyline. There are um, different branches to what's going on, but hopefully, as you watch these videos, you get a clearer paradigm shift in seeing a broader picture, um, less impacted by the collective narrative that's out there, and more um, compelled to do uh, some of your own rationalization and thinking as to what it all means. Of course, I can only tell you what I see that it means because this is DK will talk about it. And I can only talk about it from my perspective, from my paradigm. And so let's get into this next series. I'm going to do a little bit of an intro here, too, just to help any newcomers understand what you're walking into. But in the end, I think that the perspective on XRP is going to be at least modified. And absolutely, unless you're just uh, brainwashed material more personalized as well so let's do this i was listening to this video and i decided to stick this in the beginning and the reason i'm sticking this in the beginning because i was listening to my video and it was, it was so calm and so mellow and i don't want you to be bored but i want you to know what you're walking into when you come into dk we'll talk about it and so i'm gonna play this piece of this intro about me and that'll explain <laughs> how sometimes when I talk about things, it seems I'm calm, but that's just the way it is. So let's listen to this for a minute. The waters seem to calm down when we help each other out. And so DK will talk about it. We're going to talk about a lot of subjects, but we're going to look for the light, the light of truth. And hopefully when we find that light of truth along the way, it makes navigating the waters so much easier, so much more peaceful, where you can actually take in the beauty as you travel the waters. It'll be like relaxing on a beach, one of my favorite places, if you haven't. Yes, it will be like relaxing on the beach. So if you come in here for hype and hyperbole, you're not going to get it. That being said, let's keep going. In my prior video, I did a video on uh, banks and the possibility of us having to consider a bail-in as opposed to a bail-out. And I'm going to cover something else that is another consideration we might, might want to keep in the back of our minds, maybe even in the front of our minds, as another possibility that we may have to face going forward when it comes to our finances and the banks and the monetary system and the global currency reset and XRP and the SECV Ripple lawsuit and so on and so on and so forth. But here's an indication of uh, where I'm heading with this. Uh, the banks are to remain closed for 21 days in October. OK, this is in India. And uh, this October, uh, the banks will remain closed for 21 days which would include public holidays and weekends. And I touched on how there was an executive order put in place back then for gold and gold bullion. Well, XRP is our gold today. However, in regards to the banks, uh, at that time too, back in 1917, there was a um, Trading with the Enemy Act. And that Trading with the Enemy Act gave the president powers to halt trading within the U.S. with the enemies. Now think about that and blockchain. And how how do you how do you stop people from trading with the enemy virtually? Well, you just shut it all down, don't you? And so one way it is to shut down the banks, and of course another, which has been done before. It shut down the exchanges. And so it could lead to a period where American citizens aren't even able to change. And there was also the um, Emergency Banking Act, which uh, this uh, was a byproduct of that. Let's just take a little brief look at both of those now. The United States. 
United States federal law enacted on October 6, 1917, that gives the President of the United States to oversee or restrict any and all trade between the United States and its enemies, plural, in times of war. It was amended in 1933 by the Emergency Banking Act to extend the authority also in peacetime. Now, this was pulled back in 1977 by the International Emergency Economic Powers Act to restrict the application of the Trading with the Enemy Act only in times of war. We are at war, folks. And, and people seem to have forgotten that, but we've been at war now for uh, to call, they call it the war against terrorism, but they never closed that war. They never declared a victory. And that's how they continue to give presidents so much power. And this act is no different. If you have any uh, dealings with uh, crypto exchanges, you know that you do tie your bank accounts in to be able to pay for your uh, trades and your transactions okay so here we can see if you restrict the banks and close the banks well then you can stop the trading now of course you can have some of your money in usdc coins and things of that nature but they're going to go after the exchanges too as a matter of fact if you're paying attention on the Ginster, they're already going after the exchanges let's not think that we can look at all this news happening across the water across the pond and it's not going to make it here. They're going to give us a narrative and a reason and a spiel and a deal. But the mechanisms are already in place for bank bail-ins, bank shutdowns, halting of trading. Okay, so I went to do a live and it was too much fishing and searching on my uh, thing. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, just put it in there for COMEX 589 because see that's what came to mind and anyone who's involved in the in the XRP thing though 589 is a uh, number that gets a lot of attention some think it's going to be the price of XRP but I've always thought it's associated with this I, I thought it, it is I've always felt it's associated with this COMEX 589 description and so we're gonna we're gonna go check this out but you can see here it says that it's the rule is expressly intended to promote fair and equitable trading by ensuring that there are limits on a permissible price movements on any given trading day in the product subject to the rule as such the rule amendments are in compliance with this core principle so it's their ability to shut down or control the market or the elevation of the market the speed at which prices can change so there we have it, folks. Um, as they mentioned, library has lost. And just let's peruse a little bit just to pick a few things out that I think are relevant to consider in the XRP case. But of course, I'd be looking for attorney's views rather than mine on that one. I'm just sharing the news. And the news is library lost. And in looking at some of the similarities to the XRP case, mm -hmm. and, uh, on page four of this, the link will be in the description for the decision. But on page four um, of the decision, um, first let me say I think this is a, an orchestrated effort to motivate XRP holders to bail. Let me get that out first. But let's go. You decide for yourself the similarities between them and Ripple and XRP. I see some similarities, but at the same time, I also see what I believe is an effort to um, discourage uh, XRP holders and the XRP army. But I'm going to give a potential uh, strategy and development that we want to consider in this in this area. Um, Number one, it's no secret that they said that XRP is not designed for public consumption. It truly is a, the banker's coin, um, but to get a market, they needed to have the noise, and we are the noise, us retail holders. In the meantime, uh, they've been holding the price down and depressing it, and while they act like institutions are not involved, institutions are involved, and institutions are scooping them up. So those are some realities that we have to accept in this scenario. What I see 
is an effort to um, get you to come loose. Now, here's why I say that. Because give this a thought. What if a um, settlement is already getting penciled in and then inked in? What if a settlement has already been arrived to, and that's the reason now they're releasing this library determinate uh, decision to better shake loose XRP holders of their coins? Um, let's not trust the players in this. Quite honestly, let's not trust Ripple or at the SEC because it's clear that they stated that it's not designed for the public, and the SEC clearly doesn't care about us. Um, because they're supposed to represent us and, you know, they wiped out billions from our pocketbooks collectively. So the determ this decision is out. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's a threshold moment for those who own XRP and you have to decide if you're going to hold on to it or not. Now, the next video I do after this one, I'll try to tie in my thinking on both to show why when you believe in an investment sometimes you have to have go through the gut-wrenching roller coaster to benefit from it and this may be one of those times and i'm going to talk about uh rounding out some of the things i've been discussing with a goal to help my listeners who haven't yet arrived to this place to understand that we're going through a monetary system change and as much as there's narratives out there to make you believe that the big players are not involved, they are absolutely involved, have been involved. And now we're getting to the point where they're ready for everyone else to get involved and to be their source of liquidation. That's what's going on in a nutshell. And so what I'm going to show is that institutional money has been going into the crypto industry, the very wise institutional money, in preparation for one of the largest um, market booms, we'll say, that has ever been seen. And so if you want to benefit from that, it, it's going to take a change in your paradigm of what is money, mm -hmm. how do you use money, where to put your money, and what's money going to become. And so you can see this article here from Forbes where it says institutional money is pouring into the crypto market, and it's only going to grow. Now, this article is dated August 12th of 2021, folks, nearly two years ago. Now, we can listen to this article, which we're not going to do. We're going to listen to DK Will talk about it. <laughs> but at the same time, what I want folks to understand is if you haven't made your move to get involved in this next boom, like the Internet boom of the 90s, you're going to regret it. And you're going to be looking at people like myself and others who have put a few bucks into this new technology and this new industry and it's going to make a change a dramatic change in our life and livelihood you can see here that in the beginning even bitcoin was dismissed by institutions as a showy worthless asset favored by criminals now let me interject there that was a narrative that was a narrative. In some of my videos in the past, I have said frequently that the institutional money is already there at one point, nearly two years ago, I believe. Coinbase was saying that 50% of their investment was institutional investment. Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange in the United States. Now keep that in mind as you consider the SEC lawsuit and suing them. Money talks. So clearly, if they're suing the biggest players there are, and I'm going to show you those big players here, it, it, it must be for individual investor consumption because the institutions know what's going on. Notice that it says here, when BlackRock leads the way, it says when BlackRock adds crypto to its balance sheet, Financial invest advisors and high net worth individuals naturally prick up their ears. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager with 
trillion dollars of assets under management is one of 16 mutual fund managers, including Morgan Stanley Investment Management, to gain exposure to the crypto market via its global allocation and strategic income opportunities, which have a collective worth of over $40 billion. Okay, then that looks like a good place to wrap up this uh, fifth of a series. Like I've said in the beginning, I don't know how many will be in the series. Looks like it's going to wrap up in another one or two because we're getting so much more closer to current. But hopefully it's helping to pull people's minds out of the narrative. Hopefully if you made it this in, I appreciate you. I hope you like. I hope you subscribe. I hope you benefit. But at the same time, I hope you see that this is a big picture channel here. And I don't really want to focus on the hot spot of the day. Now, of course, I'll talk about those from time to time. But here we are looking for deeper meaning behind the curtain, as the title implies, paradigm shifts. And it's going to take some paradigm shifts in this one, because as we continue on, we can see that uh, this war we're involved in, involving money. See, don't forget that war has always involved money. And the impression of that dichotomy that two sides or one is going against the other, they were all going for the money and now it looks like they have some kind of truce where they don't want to cause mutual destruction but they still need to go to war because that's the tenets and basis of their system that keeps it alive and so they've agreed to the you know there's umpires in the war it seems on what they can and cannot do and that's why this picture is as simplified as i'm trying to make it is also complicated but for now this is the fifth in the series i hope you enjoyed it i hope you share it also save somebody some work in trying to figure this out themselves. I'm DK Will, and this is DK Will Talk About It. And I have talked about it. So you have a wonderful day. Check the mic and make sure it sound right.